Hello, I'm Jackie Flavin, Customer Insights Leader with Zemco, and this is Open Book, our weekly conversation series with industry experts about how they're navigating COVID-19 challenges. Today, I'm joined by Liz Boyd and Tana Elias from Madison Public Library. Tana is Madison's Digital Services Marketing Manager, and Liz is Madison's Marketing Specialist. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. I'm so excited to dive into how your marketing library services during the pandemic. This is a really big topic with libraries. Um, I think marketing can be a challenge for anybody, um, particularly public libraries who have so much to offer. Um, and then during the pandemic, it's just an extra you know, layer of complication. So you seem to be doing things really well and I'm really glad that we can share your experience with, with our audience today. So maybe a good place to start is, um, could you maybe just share a little bit about what each of you do in your roles at the library? Sure, I'm Tana and I um, oversee the marketing department and the library's website. So not the catalog, but the, the rest of the public website. So um, social media, websites, marketing, a uh, whole bunch of management things. I'm on the management team for our library. Um, so some kind of unrelated to marketing things. I started as a librarian. Actually, I started as a page at Madison Public Library and I've been there 20 and a half years. So I've really seen all aspects of library service at Madison and worked in every library that we have in our, our nine library system. Very awesome. So Tana knows it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> cool. um, yeah, so, so for me, I'm new to Madison Public Library and new to libraries in general. I've done um, some publishing stuff in the past and worked in nonprofits and corporate uh, mostly marketing and communication roles. So for the library, I do um, social media, I do the website and help with promoting um, individual programs and, and working with partners. Awesome. You together are like a perfect balance of a lot of <laughs> institutional knowledge and experience with the library and then a lot of outside experience. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so we've been in this pandemic for about six months. How has the pandemic shifted how you do marketing at Madison? Um, I'll take that first. You know, for years I've wanted to produce less um, printed material. Uh, our librarians love a flyer for every event and we have about 6,000 individual events a year, anything from a story time to a, you know, four day book festival. And so our libraries are constantly covered with flyers about this and that. Um, you know, from when you look at marketing um, and communication principles, that is not a very effective way to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was a wonderful opportunity to rethink marketing without um, a whole bunch of printed stuff. Uh, you know, it was a challenge also, which we'll talk about, I think, a little later. Uh, but, you know, print marketing has pretty much disappeared uh, with the exception of posting things um, in our, you know, in our doors. And um, we have something that we instituted called Curbside Express, which is a one page newsletter that goes out in all of the curbside material. But even that took us a month to launch because people didn't want to touch anything, right? You don't even touch a, a printed flyer. And you don't want to put something in somebody's curbside bag that makes them feel unsafe, like, oh, somebody touched this at the library. Now it's in my, you know, in with my materials. So you know, it was really a shift um, from the way that we normally do things and focusing on paper. And I think the other um, thing that has really changed for us is it's given us the time to step back, look at some of our core messaging and, um, you know, get some projects done that we were always maybe just a little too busy to do and we have kind of put off to the side. So things like setting up sign templates and, you know, some other kinds of core um, marketing work that we're, I think, doing better now and have the tools to do better in the future because we had a little bit of a breather from all of the events that we do. That's nice. Yeah, some time to, to look at the rainy day projects and <laughs> reprioritize. That is kind of nice. Yeah. Liz, um, do you want to talk about some of the online stuff? Yeah, I'll just add, I mean, like Tana said, with kind of being able to move away from print a little bit somewhat because we're forced and somewhat because we want to, um, we've done a lot more uh, things digitally. So for a while there, it felt like our only mode of communication was, you know, kind of our email newsletters, our social media, our website. So it was really nice for us to be able to focus on that a little bit more. Um, and 
like I said, me being new, I kind of came in and, and jumped on social media right away um, and wanted to focus a lot on engagement. So kind of looking at our different types of postings that we've been doing, um, previous to libraries closing down, we had obviously a lot of events. And so we were able to shift during this time to kind of more branded messages, things that we were able to do a little bit more storytelling with. Mm. Um, so that's been really exciting. And I think that, I mean, we've seen our engagement grow in the last six months because of that. Um, we also incorporated, I would say, some more uh, diverse messaging. I mean, we had like things that we were trying to help public health um, get out and kind of aligning with some of the things that the city needed to say, important messages that were like bigger than the library itself. Um, and then we also recently just got approval to do some Facebook advertising. Uh, previously, we weren't able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so when we're trying to promote new things, we've been doing a lot of um, going in that area. We basically not having to do some of that in-person promotional spending that we had done before allowed us to repurpose funds and try some new things out digitally. That's really exciting. You guys have really, um, made the most of this time with all the, with all the awesome things that you're doing. Um, and that's great that you can do Facebook advertising now. Um, what I'm wondering, how has your messaging shifted? Uh, like, if, you know, if you have to think of like what your core message might have been before the pandemic, has it shifted um, during the pandemic or because of the pandemic? Yeah, I think, um, again, like we mentioned before, like this did give us a unique opportunity to kind of pull from the normal hustle and bustle and think about what is our core message and what is our core audience. Um, we did a lot of uh, both print and social media focus on events um, before we closed. And um, it really gave us the opportunity to craft some messages around core services, um, gave us an amazing opportunity um, to highlight the online collections that we have. So we saw a huge increase, like I think most libraries around the country saw a huge increase in um, accessing the online collections that we were able to do, um, we had wanted for years to um, get an online library card process so that people could apply for a library card online without the usual showing of ID in person. And uh, our circulation team was able to figure that out. And we uh, processed over 2,000 new library card applications in a matter of weeks as soon as we were able to do that. So, you know, normally that would have been a message that went out there and, you know, some people would do it. But because we had closed and then several weeks later, we were able to say, you can get a library card online and access all of this free content. You know, it, the service and the library card service got much more attention than it really would have. You know, we have, um, I think we had like a 300% increase in users of the online book collection. Um, our foundation repurposed a grant um, that they had planned to give us for something else and raised over a hundred, I think it was $130,000 in a matter of months to increase access to that online collection. So they were able to promote us, we were able to promote us, we were able to get the process in place so that people could discover that collection. And they'll continue to be users of that collection. You know, once they've made the group, um, they know that's another option for them, even when we Again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great way to introduce some things. I mean, even beyond like, you know, the ebooks and audiobooks and movies and things like that that people maybe think of right away. There's also things like Ancestry.com and Mango Languages and our newspaper collection. We just did New York Times and Washington Post. And I think it was a great um, way to kind of expand and let people know, hey, we have all of these other great things that maybe you haven't even heard of before. Yeah, I think the pandemic in a lot of ways, um, like the pandemic, the libraries are like exactly what people needed and indeed needed and need during the pandemic, all this information, trusted information and, and awesome things to do with your time. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people felt like when their libraries were closed, it was like a panic moment, like there's no library, you know, and so in a lot of ways, it's you probably had a bigger audience for your messages than than before, um, and that's really awesome. Did you did you find like the tone shifting of your messages? Like, um, I know at Demco we talked about you know we have to make sure like we're conveying 
how we, you know, we're like, we're being people and we're empathetic um, because that's how we were feeling. And that's, you know, what, what the tone of everything was, especially in the beginning of the pandemic. Did you find that your messages shifted in that way too? Yeah, I can kind of weigh in on that a little bit just from social media. I mean, our social media, I think, has always been uh, informative, but conversational. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, yeah, we, we definitely talked more about the emotion of the situation, right? Because all of us are humans and everyone is struggling. So like sending out a lot more messages of just like support and love. And here's like ways that we're thinking of you. And we know that you're thinking of each other. Yeah. Um, so I think trying to emphasize kind of the community part, which is obviously a really big pillar of the library anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think to add to that, you know, there are just a lot of emotions about safety, right? So it's not normally something that we talk about or verbalize, like not only are you safe when you come to the library, but we're doing procedures in a safe way, but we're also, you know, making some decisions like closing our libraries to keep to keep our staff safe so those are messages that we you know don't normally have to have and so just making sure that we're intentional about like why we're closing or why we're not offering a service and bringing it back like liz said to that community um safety especially in the early days when nobody really knew anything you know it was yeah. <laughs> Um, looking back, uh, is there anything that you wish you would have done differently or, um, you know, something that you learned and have changed since, since trying it out? Uh, I mean, I think as marketers, we, we tend to be a little type A. We like to have a plan for everything. And this was, you know, a time in which that was really difficult. Like things are moving so fast with the pandemic, but also just across our country in different ways like all of the, the racial justice things coming up. So um, I feel like we wanted to be very intentional about the messages that we were putting out there and setting the right tone. So in some ways, I think that we ended up feeling like we were being more reactive instead of proactive, even though we felt like we were moving as fast as we could to convey the important information that we wanted to get out there. I hear you. Yeah, and I don't know how... how anyone, any organizational person could have been proactive <laughs> with all of this, this wild stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, um, what has been the biggest challenge or the hardest part of your role since the pandemic started? And, and you've, you've sort of touched on this, you know, just how do, how do you plan when everything is so unknown? But um, is there like a particular or you know, specific challenge that you've had um, in your role? during this time? Yeah, um, I, I took on an additional role during this time. So, you know, being both um, overseeing marketing and the website and also um, being a manager, I was not only communicating decisions, but making them or helping make them. And um, I also stepped into a, like an emergency communications role with the city of Madison. So that helped me by um, having a better sense of like what was coming from the city. You know, we're a city agency and so we have to follow city guidelines. Um, but also, uh, you know, it was hard. Like I was doing two jobs at once and we had just opened a new library. It was open for four days before we closed all our libraries. So, you know, I had come off this like, uh, you know, 60 hour week thing trying to launch a new library and it was a positive message and then all of a sudden they had to shift and like there was this really negative message or like unknown message um, and so I think one of the hardest parts was really just like not knowing what's coming next and then having to juggle that um, city role and library role and also you know that was specific to me but I think a lot of um, public libraries were juggling communication about the things that they normally communicate about like their services and their programs with um, learning along with all the rest of us in the country about what are the safety precautions that are important and what safety precautions ap apply to the public libraries. And then making sure that you're using the right words. Is it coronavirus or COVID-19? You know, what kind of language do you use to, to convey the health and safety? What kind of sanitizer do you use? And how do you, con you know, how do you talk to people? 
So like all these different things um, that were new and changing all the time, you know, in Madison, we had state orders and public health orders. Uh, we are a partner with the city clerk's office in terms of elections. Mm -hmm. it happened just weeks before an election. Um, so we help promote election messages at the same time that we help promote library messages. So really balancing the big messages that the community needed to hear with our library specific messages. And uh, you know, just knowing that things were changing all the time. We also um, were a promoter and a, a partner with the census. And you know, that was a big uh, effort in public libraries. And we had a whole bunch of plans in place and you know, uh, within a, like a week before um, we closed, I was doing TV interviews about how people could come into the library and learn about the census and fill out the census. And then, you know, two weeks later, I was saying, don't come to the library. We don't know what's happening with the <laughs> census, right? So that was complicated and hard. Yeah. I can't imagine being a librarian who, I feel like librarians always know everything or how to find out everything. And then just not having the information, like that just feels like, like it's not, you're like, this isn't what I do, you know, like I, you know. <laughs> But we need, well, we, but as librarians have played such an important role in helping us curate the information and relying, especially like, you know, with the, not only the pandemic, but the, of the election, just like finding credible information. Um, and Liz, you were getting used to a new job when this started. So I'm sure there were a ton of challenges. Like, how do you orientate yourself to a whole new organization and industry during a pandemic? I don't know how. <laughs> well, and it's like the most high pressure situation, right? Because it's like these are, really weighty topics and we are seen as an authority so i was very conscious of like not wanting to make any missteps on social media and you know just reaching out to people internally i think also just the library is like a safe haven for so many people and i think it was really important for us to think through um what ways can we support people that are going to be impactful and how can we communicate that message you know, because it's like, I, I think most librarians and me, even though I'm not a librarian, you know, your heart goes out and you want to be able to, to do everything all at once and provide everything for everyone. So I think it was, um, I think it was a challenge to hone in on, okay, these are the X, Y, and Z things that we can do that are going to support you right now. Yeah. And we're working on everything else. <laughs> yeah. And you guys really have done a fantastic job, by the way, of navigating through this. Um, like, for example, the book bundles. I love the CSA book bundles that you developed. How did you um, How did you go about promoting those exactly? Because that's a wonderful brand new service. How did you get the message out? Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was a wonderful, it is a wonderful program. I'm just, what's, tell us about the marketing behind it. Yeah, I can kind of start there um, because a lot of it started at online. So, you know, we made sure that we created some specific graphics around this. Um, we did want to have a, a pretty clear plan for how to talk about this with people. Um, once we got it out on social media, I feel like a big focus of mine was like finding those stories that would really convey what this box could be for different people. You know, if it's like, I need to find eight books that my kid is not going to hate reading <laughs> for the summer and I have no clue where to start. Like maybe I know that he likes a graphic novel, but that's all I've got. You know, like these are kind of the things that I feel like librarians excel at. So it was really awesome to be able to offer that. Um, when it came to promoting just services in general, I feel like it, I really thought strategically about um, what services match what audience, right? So with something like the CSA box or curbside service, that's really going to people who are probably already active library users. So how are we going to talk to them differently than we would um, something like our computer services that, you know, you don't even have to have a library card to do that. Right. So this is like a whole new audience who maybe isn't very familiar with what we do, but we do have a service that like would work really well for them. So I especially was thinking about that with targeting for like Facebook advertising and some of the other advertising we were doing about these new services, um, including things like Find Free. So I'll let Tana jump in on the rest of how we were promoting these different things. Yeah, you know, I think um, we were really able, Liz was really able to, to 
target and things to online platforms. Like not all messages are best online. And so one of the things that I think we struggled a little with was public computing because we were promoting a service to people that didn't have computers or internet or the ability to print. So, you know, promoting online books to people who are online is one thing, but promoting um, access to a service to people who aren't online that need to be online is something different. And, you know, many of them needed to be online or use computer um, access and printing at the at the library for really important topics, uh, eviction stuff and getting their COVID test and, you know, reading email from family, like really important things, applying for government benefits, um, getting their taxes done, all of, of those really important topics. So there, um, you know, it was, it, we, it took us a while to build that service and to build notification of that service. One of the easiest things that we did, despite my um, not wanting to have paper flyers, was put a paper flyer on the door. You know, people were coming to the library anyway to see if we were open to be able to say, you can come and use the computer and these are the guidelines, you know, between these hours. That's how we introduced our computer pilot. We opened up two libraries kind of quietly and just put a sign on the door and told all of our staff, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to try it out. We're going to go slow. We're going to learn from the experience. And then we're going to roll the service out at, at most of our libraries. Um, that word of mouth advertising was really great. And it was um, doing things like empowering our staff mm -hmm. to make sure that every time somebody called, they could refer the service to people. It was reaching out to our many, many community partners and telling them, we're going to open this service up in your neighborhood. Uh, we're doing it kind of quietly. So please refer your clients or your churchgoers or whoever it is that you're working with to that service if they need it. And then when we were able to roll it out to all of our libraries, that's when we would do publicity and, you know, all of our usual um, promotion. So really working with partners was, was important. Again, um, like Liz said, thinking about the audience and what are our best ways to, to reach those audiences. Mm -hmm. You know, we also worked with the press. Um, I, like, we had just opened this new library. And so, you know, we were doing a lot of media stories about how wonderful libraries were and uh, why it was important to invest in a new library in our community. And um, I feel like that did give us a bit of an in because we were already talking to all of these reporters we were one of the first um, City of Madison agencies to close um, and it's because our library board, uh, you know, felt that it was important for us to close for the safety of staff. They were getting a lot of um, direct email from staff saying we don't feel safe working. Uh, and so we, we closed before a lot of other city offices did. So of course, you know, right after we opened a new library, we closed all of our libraries. That, that was media attention that was ready made, right? Um, and then we were just able to capitalize on that by introducing new services and making sure that we had all the details. So um, when we opened curbside, the mayor helped us kick that off. Uh, when we did the CSA boxes, that was uh, a new story. Um, when we introduced the new um, online library cards and talked about the online collection, that was a story. Uh, and and then um, moving into budget season in the summer, that was a series of stories as well. So we have relationships with our local media um, we have really reached out and tried to connect with them on a regular basis and I feel like you know we've been in the news pretty regularly um, even though we, we aren't offering all of the same services that's really great yeah um, it's funny like it was just listening to you both share I was just reflecting on how marketing is kind of simple as it's for it's getting the right message to the right people but actually doing that is very challenging. Um, and it's really impressive how you've been able to do that with everything else going on. I mean, really you've zoned in on what's important and how, you know, what, what are we trying to say and how do we say it to the right people? Um, yeah, very, very awesome. I'm so glad that we get to share all these wisdom bits with people. Um, and I was also wondering, so in a normal year, September would be, you know, library sign up, uh, library card sign up month. There would be a lot of promotion around that. How has your promotion been different this year? How are you thinking about it differently? Uh, I would say we're thinking about it very differently. In some ways, it's, it's a really exciting year for us because we just announced that we're no longer assessing fines. 
So we have a lot of fine free messaging that we're trying to get out and we're wanting to wrap that into library card sign up month and kind of talk about like, you know, this is your chance, like welcome back to the library. We're here for you. We're taking down these barriers. Um, we want you to enjoy these services, right? So we are doing a number of like advertising and brand awareness messages to encourage people to get a new library card or like I said, to kind of come back to the library. Um, we've been doing a series of location-based um, like mobile ads, which I think have gone really well for, for our find free messaging. So we're trying to target um, some areas that we know people have been less, you know, people who have less library cards or are not regular library users. Um, and I think that's been really effective for us. Again, also using like the Facebook advertising and just general like social media content to raise awareness about um, find free as well as just encouraging people to sign up for library cards. I think we're also, um, you know, trying to be mindful because we know that like typically a library card sign up month campaign would be aimed at like school age kids. And so we'd be working with the schools and with some of these other community partners. And this year is probably the most stressful year for kids, parents, educators, and caregivers. So we're kind of taking things slow and we're asking organizations that are local here, like the Madison Schools and MSCR, um, what we can do to support them and try not to make it uh, about us, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's very smart, yeah. Um, the the location-based mobile ads sounds like something that would be really hard to execute. Would you say, having done it, would you say that it is easy, hard, worth either way, worth the time kind of thing? I would say it's surprisingly easy. It okay. kind of uh, is scary how these things work, but honestly, it's been very effective for us. Like we being in, um, you know, like we're, we're one city, we know what neighborhoods our libraries are in and we know who our audience is. So it's, it's been really easy for us to make sure that we're hitting the people that we wanna hit. And we've gotten a great response rate. Um, whereas like typically on like a display ad, you'll get, this might be too technical, but like a, you know, like 0.4% click through rate, we're seeing like double that. Wow. So, I, I think we're like hitting people with an effective message at like the right time. Yeah, that's awesome. Really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't emphasize the importance of data enough, you know, <laughs> able to do that because we had data on where um, we had fewer library card users per capita, you know, what, what branches had um, less, less library card holders, and then also which libraries had um, patrons with more blocks, you know, again, from our fine free messaging. Um, we really wanted to hit those patrons because, you know, we're, we're waiving their fines and that's a, a welcome back message, like Liz said. So um, if we hadn't had the data and we hadn't taken the time to like run those reports and map it out, we wouldn't have been able to take advantage of the service that she found um, to, to take advantage of that geolocation factor. That's a really good point, yeah. It is funny when you're on the flip side of those ads, you're like, oh, I wonder how like somebody categorized me, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's wonderful. That's really cool that you have figured out that and that it's, that it's delivering really good re uh, results for you. Um, I'm wondering to also to hear your thoughts on marketing and inclusivity these days, especially. So um, library marketers are thinking very much more intentionally about library services and programs and making them more accessible and that includes the marketing for them too. So this, you know, could be for people with disabilities or just more broadly um, people with, you know, restricted access to, you know, digital services. Um, and I mean, there's so many different ways to, to think about it, but um, what does this look like at Madison? Yeah, I can kind of start on that one. Um, I mean, I think for us, inclusion, equity, and access have always been things that we thought about. <laughs> and we're very proactive about, you know, trying to make sure that we're opening things up and that we're taking down barriers. Um, like Tana said, a lot of the, the research, we've been thinking about going fine free for a couple of years at this point. And we have a lot of data to back up the fact that like this should be a way to hit people who otherwise felt like they didn't belong at the library. Um, so I say that's something that's really important to us. Mm -hmm. We've also, um, as Tana mentioned, had more time to think about our partnerships and how we're working with the community and making sure that those things align with our strategic lens. 
we actually created an internal team called the strategic partnership team. So we're reevaluating um, our partners, like I said, based on making sure that their uh, core values line up with ours and that we're having the highest impact. Um, I think one example of that is we work with um, the University of Madison's Writing Center. They do a program called the Madison Writing Assistance Program, which um, you know helps people with like personal and professional writing projects as we're thinking about you know people trying to recover, the economy trying to recover from COVID-19. There are so many people who are facing an employment crisis. So, you know, we're really grateful that we're able to provide help to people with like updating resumes and cover letters and, you know, people who are really struggling students who may be needing more one on one help while they're trying to do virtual learning. So I think we're taking in a lot of factors from the outside environment, as well as trying to talk about some of the resources that we've already had ready and available. Um, like I said, especially about like the racial equity stuff. We've already been talking about that as a city of Madison. We've been um, having that as like a core focus since 2014. Mm -hmm. And so as a library, we've compiled um, tons of resources, books, videos, um, teaching resources that people can use to educate themselves about racial justice. Um, so I think we're kind of coming at it from a couple of different angles, but mm -hmm. it is something that's really important to us. And I think it's be become a very important part of our messaging. Yeah, yeah. I I um, did a, some volunteering with the Library uh, Foundation a few years ago, and I remember they were very intentional about auditing all of the programs and everything, um, top mm -hmm. to bottom. And I thought that was really awesome. And that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> this is not a new topic for for Madison, um, so that's that's great to hear. And I also thought like just even you know putting a flyer, um, going back to paper for people that don't have internet access. Like that's another great example. Right. Um, uh, did I cut you off, Tana? Were you going to say something? Sorry. No, no. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say is, you know, in addition to all the things Liz mentioned, you know, we're constantly asking ourselves, you know, is this website accessible? Could we, could we change the language to make it easier to read, to make it easier to translate? What information needs to be translated into Spanish? You know, are we intentionally um, using photos of diverse staff and diverse customers rather than always, you know, the white kid reading on the library floor. Um, so making sure that if whether we use our own photography or stock um, art. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on. <laughs> I could jump in a little bit too. I mean, she's totally right about us being intentional about our, our photography and trying to like proactively get photos that are gonna be really representative of the people who come to the right. library. Um, I was also thinking about the Dream Bus, which, mm -hmm. you know, kind of tackles the location barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, what do we have, nine locations, Tana? I'm gonna mess this yep. up. Nine locations currently. Um, and the Dream Bus, you know, is on the road going to these places that, that don't have uh, a library near them. And for people who, who, it's not easy to just jump on a bus or use the car or whatever, to get to a library location. Um, the Dream Bus also has Wi-Fi. So it's kind of been going around and, and being a little hotspot for people as well. Yeah, so to explain, um, the Dream Bus is a really small bus uh, that you don't need a, a commercial driver's license to drive. And it uh, had it for about a year and a half. And it just goes to various sites around town. We partner with the Dane County Library Service, which runs our countywide bookmobile. And um, this summer, we partnered with all of the schools uh, who have summer meal sites. And so the Dream Bus went to where we knew families would be and families who were um, maybe more in need of services, not able to, you know, just order the books that they want off Amazon. Um, so that partnership is, is another way that we're kind of getting out into the community. And then what we learn um, through those conversations, we bring back to the library and it forms future marketing and future service delivery. Yeah, like just going out into the, the patrons world, you know, and like understanding yeah. them a little bit better, seeing them outside of the library is probably just nice context and um, deeper, you know, this is, not, this is another or deeper intimacy with the patrons, you know, in a, you know, not, probably not the best word choice, but just like having a deeper connection, I guess is what I'm trying to. Yeah, I think it's trying to convey that the library is not just physical buildings, you know, the right. library is, is part of the community. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I really miss Madison Public Library. I moved up to Minneapolis <laughs> a few years ago and just talking to you guys, I'm like, oh, I used to take my kids to the farmer's market and then we'd go to the central library every, you know, every weekend. So um, I'm very nostalgic right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been so helpful. Um, th this is so rich with, with awesome things that people can um, implement at their libraries. And um, I just want to applaud you for all the great work that you're doing during the pandemic and always. Thank you for having us. Thank you yeah, so much.